Good morning. My name is Sam. I am an alcoholic, and I am also a son of recovery. Let's start out with the serenity prayer. Good and gracious God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So I've been reading through the AA Big Book, and I'm in the personal story section. This morning's personal story is titled, Flooded with Feeling. When a barrier to God collapsed, this self-described agnostic was at step three. When I first came to AA, I thought everyone had drunk more than I had, that everybody had gotten into more trouble. But I kept coming to meetings, and after a while, I began to hear the beginnings of their stories. I came to realize that I was on the same road. I just, I just hadn't gone as far yet. I had my first drink my senior year of high school. That first night, I slipped out the window so my parents wouldn't hear me leave. There were four of us, and we only brought four bottles of homebrew. I never made that mistake again. The next week, a bunch of us went camping, and we brought cases of beer. We finished it all. The others drank a lot, too. But I was the one who woke up in the middle of the night and started wandering around the countryside by the light of the moon. I was the one who walked for miles searching for something. I now know what I was looking for. Unlike the rest of them, I wanted another drink. I had a great time that summer between high school and college. It revolved around drinking. Drinking and football. Drinking and hunting. Drinking and playing pool. Drinking and driving. Nothing really bad happened, but it could have. I nearly got arrested. A friend just missed being shot. The car I was riding in stopped just before it crashed. I don't think most moderate social drinkers remember so clearly the night they had their first drink. Excuse me. I'm sure that very few of them make that date into an annual celebration by getting as drunk as possible. It was in my second year of drinking that I started saying that if you can still feel your face, you're not drunk enough. In my third year, I drank homemade peach wine, and when it was gone, I had some whiskey. That night, I vomited, in a blackout. Soon, I found that I didn't get as sick on vodka. Drinking vodka was like something out of science fiction. I could be someplace one moment and instantly transported to somewhere else the next. I could never seem to find that happy balance. I remember going to a party. I started drinking, and suddenly, I could talk to anybody. I was having a lot of fun, but I kept on drinking. Soon, I could barely walk. A friend drove me home that night, but I sometimes drove a car when I was too drunk to walk. I became a teacher and didn't drink too often for a while. When I did drink, I almost always got drunk. The teachers would get together a couple times a year for a poker party. I usually didn't drink anything. One time I did, and I made a fool of myself. I decided that drinking just wasn't fun anymore. I quit. My cure for drinking was isolation. I would get up, go to work, come home, watch TV, and go to bed. I, it got to the point where I couldn't remember anything good that had ever happened. I couldn't imagine anything good ever happening in the future. Life had shrunk down to an endless, awful now. The depression became so bad that only medical treatment kept me from killing myself. After seven months, the doctor took me off the medication. I wasn't suicidal, but I wasn't very happy either. A new teacher came to my school, and I invited myself over to her place for a drink. I remember telling her, as I lifted the glass, that this might not be such a great idea, but I believe it's worth the risk. As casually as that, I began drinking again. At the winter break, she went to visit her boyfriend. I was alone again. Two days before Christmas, I went to a party. I wasn't going to drink because I had driven there, and I knew that drinking and driving was a bad idea for me. I wasn't feeling particularly good or bad, just a little uncomfortable because I didn't know most of the people there. I was sitting on the couch one minute and up drinking a glass of wine the next. There was no con conscious premeditation at all. This is the point when many people say, and I went on drinking for 10 more years. Instead, an odd thing happened. A few days later, a teacher came up to me at work and said that she was an alcoholic and that she was going to AA. She had never seen me drink, so I don't know what made her do that. The next day, I asked her how often she went to a meeting. Once a week, I asked. No. She said that she had been going nearly every day for almost six months. That seemed a little extreme, but I thought that maybe if I went to a meeting with her, it might help her out. Besides, I was lonely. Halfway through the meeting, I had the strangest idea. People were introducing themselves as alcoholics, and I had the urge to do the same. This was peculiar because I wasn't, of course. Later, my friend asked me what I thought of the meeting. I said that I didn't really know. It was only much later I realized that for the first time in years, I felt that I belonged. 
The next day, we went to another meeting, and this time, I did say I was an alcoholic. I went to the third meeting by myself. I was nervous. I felt as if I were about to jump out of my skin. I did something that was amazing to me. Before the meeting, I stuck out my hand and introduced myself as a newcomer. I had someone to talk to. Calm down. From time to time, I would tell the truth. I said in a meeting that I was afraid to get a sponsor because I was afraid he might ask me to do something. I left that meeting with a telephone number. I called it, and sure enough, my new sponsor started leading me through the steps using the big book. I called him every day. I told him that I just didn't want to be an alcoholic. He said it didn't matter what I wanted. The question I had to answer for myself was whether I was or wasn't. He even suggested that I could try a little controlled drinking if I wasn't sure. I knew I had never been able to do that. I didn't have to do any more research. All I really had to do was review the drinking I had already done. I remember telling a friend years ago that I didn't have a drinking problem. I had a stopping problem. We laughed. It was true. But there was something else going on. Something that never occurred to me until I came to AA. I didn't just have a stopping problem. I had a starting problem, too. No matter how often I stopped, or for how long, I always started drinking again. After not drinking for three months, I was on the phone with the friend who had taken me to that first meeting. I was complaining to her about problems at work and how my sponsor didn't understand me. Later in the conversation, I mentioned that even when I described myself as agnostic, I thought maybe something was watching out for me. She asked, Isn't it about time you made a decision? I knew where to look in the big book, and I had been careful to avoid it until then. I turned to the third step prayer and and quietly read it to her over the phone. Nothing happened. I didn't expect anything to happen. Then, for some reason, I turned back to the words. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles. They echoed in my head. Something happened. A barrier collapsed. Without moving or speaking, I was carried away on a flood of emotion. Yet, at the same time, I was completely aware of myself and my surroundings. I could hear my friend's voice asking what had happened to me. I couldn't answer. I still can't explain it. I know that I took the third step, turning my will and my life over to a higher power. That night, because I began writing a fourth step inventory the next day, and I continued to write until I did the fifth step with my sponsor. Soon, I had a list of people I had harmed. I talked about each of the amends with my sponsor. By the time I had started setting things right with my family, I began to feel a lot better. More than 11 years later, it's hard to recapture the feelings of that night. What do I believe as a result? I can say that doubting God's existence was no barrier at all to a spiritual experience. Also, I can say that having such an experience didn't lead me to any uncertainty about God. Or certainty. Alcoholics Anonymous gives me the freedom to believe and to doubt as much as I need to. I do know that my life is different now. I haven't had a drink since I came to AA. I have fewer resentments, and I don't spend much time thinking about the past. I found that my experience can be of help to others. I have come to believe that hard times are not just meaningless suffering, and that something good might turn up at any moment. That's a big change for someone who used to come who used to come to in the morning feeling sentenced to another day of life. When I wake up today, there are lots of possibilities. I can hardly wait to see what's going to happen next. I keep coming back because it works. Amen. What an amazing story. See, I love how this story of somebody who is agnostic and has no certainty or uncertainty about God still in his life uh, recognizes that he did have a spiritual experience, and that has nothing to do with how he feels or understands God, um, is that he had a spiritual experience because he was open to it. Uh, and I want to say that it was the fellowship that led him there, uh, and I think think that is true, listening to the story. Um, a couple things did uh, speak out to me. One was uh, that he called his sponsor every day. My sponsor and I never spoke on the phone, not a single time. We text, we messaged each other, but we saw each other pretty much every day at meetings. We only met uh, together usually about once a week, um, but because... He and I both often went to meetings. Uh, We saw each other pretty regularly. So I was able to check in often. Uh, But the other thing was, I had so much on my plate during that time with my DUI and probation 
and work and memes that it was hard to think of anything else. Uh, so I hate to say that I was easily distracted away from alcohol, but it was that for a little bit there at the beginning. Um, but I also love how his sponsor said it isn't, it, he said it didn't matter what I wanted. The question I had to answer for myself was whether I was or wasn't. And that is true. The question is not that you, I just didn't want to be an alcoholic. That's not the question when you enter AA. Um, the question is, are you an alcoholic? Because if you are, then you need to be there. And if you're not, then go out and live life and enjoy it. Uh, and you don't have a... But I love how he also says he didn't need to do any more research because uh, the thing about telling a friend that he had a stopping problem, but he also had a starting problem, he realized. And I think that is the case for any alcoholic, any of us, all of us. I think I can make that generalization in that the problem isn't... The problem is stopping, but the problem is also starting. Um, once we start, we can't stop. And once we stop, until we have had the spiritual experience, uh, it's difficult to stop. Or, and it's difficult not to start again. Um, but that is what I took from this. And I really do love how he really is a great example of how this isn't a Christian program. It's just a spiritual program. So please leave any thoughts, comments, or questions. Uh, blessings and peace, love, and coffee.